Right, um, this I I, I want to say is about my tenth attempt um, at recording this and actually getting it to work. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be fairly brief because otherwise I might end up killing the computer in a minute. Um, but you know, it'd be fine. Right, you've got some questions there in the back of your book. Answer them. Um, pause this, and then I'm going to go through the answer in a minute. Right, hopefully you paused it and you answered the questions, go through them. Cation is just a positive ion, um, they're generally metals, because metals lose electrons. Um, what electrode would the cation be attracted to? It would be the cathode, um, and the reason for that is the cathode is positive. Nope, the cathode is negative, the cathode is negative. Um, the cations are positive, so opposite charges attract. What type of wire loop must be used during flame tests? The platinum loop. Um, why can't you identify the metal ions in a mixture using a flame test? because the colours mix and you can't identify the, the metal from a mixture. You need to see the proper colour, otherwise it's just not going to work. Um, what colour flame do lithium ions produce? Crimson. Number six, can all metal ions be identified using a flame test? No, no they cannot. Um, they don't all produce a colour. What is a precipitate? It is a solid product within a solution. Um, so you'd mix two liquids together goes cloudy and the reason for that is you've made a solid product and you'd be able to see that because you would see um, a little s in the state symbols um, in your equation and what's the charge from aluminium ion it is positive three um, so title metal hydroxides and today's date 21st of october and um, so get that written down in the front of your books and then we'll move on So some metals will form coloured insoluble precipitates with sodium hydroxide. So what I want you to do, think about these questions on the um, slide, um, pause the video if you need some more time to think about it, and we'll go through them. So first of all, precipitate, as we said, is a solid product within a solution. Um, insoluble means that it can't dissolve. What will you be able to use to identify the metal ions? Well, the colour of the precipitate. Um, if metals give you different colours in a precipitate, then you can use that colour to identify what the metal is. Um, what's the formula of sodium hydroxide? Um, you get a absolute treat because you get to see my terrible writing with a mouse again. Um, so it is N. That is not an A. N A O H. Next one. What ions make up sodium hydroxide? It is. Na plus and OH minus. Right, for this we would be doing the practical lesson. In fact, we are doing the practical lesson um, today, but I can't. It wouldn't work me showing you it over a demo because it, it just it, it gets too messy and too confusing. Um, so what I want you to do is to watch the video. Um, and it's the free science lessons bloke. He's not that bad. He does explain everything you need to know. Um, so if you could watch that, I'll put the link on team so it's easier to view. Or just type in metal hydroxides um, chemistry and it's the free science lesson one. Um, so if you do that now, and I'll talk you through the colours afterwards. Um, so go watch the video like right now. Right, you should be back to my video now, fingers crossed. Um, you should have watched it and enjoyed every second of it because it's an amazing video. Um, so your colour of precipitates then. Calcium is white. Um, oh, I'm going to subject you to my writing again. Right, um, magnesium is the same, so I'm just going to draw some dashes to say it's the same. This one is the same as well. But aluminium, and I'm not going to write this out because I won't be able to type it. I can't type it. I can't write it either. Aluminium will redissolve um, when you add more um, sodium hydroxide. So it'll go white, and if you add more sodium hydroxide, it'll go colourless again because the precipitate redissolves. Um, copper 2 is blue, um, iron 2 is green, and iron 3 is a lovely brown colour. Um, don't worry about the ionic equations yet. I'm about to talk you through them. So 
we said this earlier, what happens when you add more sodium hydroxide to the aluminium hydroxide? Um, the precipitate redissolves and it becomes a colourless solution. So you only want to do this. Um, as the free science lessons bloke said, um, obviously it's difficult to distinguish between magnesium, calcium and aluminium. Um, but because the aluminium one redissolves, you can always identify the aluminium. If you wanted to look at calcium and magnesium, you could end up having to do a flame test to get that um, orange-red colour for calcium. Um, so, writing the ionic equations then. Um, now, ionic equations is something we've done a while ago, and it's just about making sure that the ions um, balance on each side. So, we're going to start off with, um, and you'll be thrilled to see my amazing writing skills again, um, calcium. So, we've got calcium, which is... 2 plus, reacting it with a hydroxide ion, which is OH minus, and we're making calcium hydroxide. Now, to say we're making calcium hydroxide, we want two lots of this negative ion here, but we want two lots of all of it. So we're going to have to pop it into brackets. They are brackets. Trust me. Do what I'm doing. I'm going to put a little two there to say we want two of them. Now, this is nearly done, except for we've not got state symbols and our ions are not balanced. We've got one calcium here and one calcium here. But we've only got one hydroxide ion, but we've got two here. So we need to put a big number two here, a really big number two there, um, just in case you couldn't tell that's a two. It is a two, not a Z. Um, <laughs> we're going to put state symbols on. So first one, because it's in a solution, it is aqueous. Second one, again, in solution, so it's aqueous. And then finally, because we've made a precipitate, we know that precip precipitates are solid. I hate that word. Um, what is going on with my writing? Um, that is an S. Not a weird number two or number five. It is an S. So we've got Ca2+, plus, which is aqueous. Add 2OH-, minus, which is aqueous. Makes calcium hydroxide. So CaOH2. I've obviously got your brackets in there, which is a solid. Now you need to do these need to make an ionic equation for the rest of them. So I'll just say that the copper, copper one, so here, and the iron one here, and the magnesium one here, it's going to be exactly the same. You're just going to swap out Ca for Cu or Ca for Fe. Um, and then when it comes to the ones that are 3 plus, obviously you write 3 plus there, you're going to need three of these, and that's going to be a little three afterwards. Um, if you're not sure, the answers are later on in the um, lesson. That's what I was trying to, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, the later on in the lesson. Um, but I'll just tell you that the revision guide did it in a different order to me. So just make sure you're looking at the right one rather than um, the wrong one, because otherwise you're going to think you've done it wrong and you probably won't have done. So as I said, answer on the next slide for your ionic equations. Um, please try to do it yourself first. I understand it's difficult, and normally in lessons I would be going, going through it on the visualizer um, with everyone, but obviously I can't do that now. Um, so fingers crossed, you understand it, um, and if not, look through the answers and try and work backwards instead. So here are your answers. I'm not going to draw on it too long. If you need to pause it and double check what you've done, that's fine, um, but then we're going to move on. So what you've got to complete now is you've got some exam questions, um, which I've put on Teams for you. Um, and on the next slide, there is one of those revision cards as well. Um, so a revision card here, obviously answer all the questions, and then I have put the answers to the exam questions and this um, card on the next page. So I would stop this video now, do the work, and then come back to it to go through the answers. Hopefully you found the work all right. Um, answers for your exam questions are here, so pause it. Answers for your um, revision card are here, so again, pause it, mark your work. Now, hopefully you've done all of that, it's all made sense. 
Um, so if you've finished, what you need to be doing is sort of doing something useful with the rest of your time. Um, so one thing I would be doing is making some flashcards for the tests we've learnt about so far. So for example, gas tests, I would write hydrogen on one side, I'd turn over the card, and I'd write, um, you use a lit splint and it makes a squeaky pop. Um, if you were doing a flame test, I'd put potassium on one side of the card and then lilac flame on the other side of the card. That type of thing. You need to know these different tests and there are a lot of them to learn. Learning them as flashcards is probably going to be the easiest way to do it. You're not going to remember stuff by just reading. Um, I wish you could, but it just doesn't work like that. Um, after you've done that, or if you, if you don't want to do that, don't do it, um, but do something with the information. You might want to make a big summary page of it all. So after you've done all of that, um, I gave you an exam paper last week, which you can have a go at. Any sections you're stuck with, send me a picture of it, um, and I'll try and help you the best I can. Um, and I've also put the 2018 paper on Teams for you in the class materials section. So fingers crossed, in fact, you do, I'm not even going to say fingers crossed, you do have enough work to be doing. Um, any issues, anything that you need to ask me, um, then obviously send me an email. Right, enjoy the rest of your day, hopefully it all makes sense, um, and make sure you get some good revision done over half term.